Oh, welcome, welcome to the Shopway Show. So happy that you're with me this evening. And some of you saw me here at 1 p.m. on my radio show this afternoon, but I have returned because I missed you all clearly so much. Uh, it's a little bit past 7 p.m. on the East Coast. And today I wanted to chat about something that I think a lot of us who on this show have discussed back and forth. Many of my guests have talked about it and chatted about it on the show. The idea or the difference maybe, or the idea behind corporatism versus capitalism and having to deal with poverty, which people would agree that poverty is a problem. We want, we want to try to fix it to the best of our ability. Maybe we can. We'll, we'll see. I want to bring on someone who has spoken about this and teaches it and talks about it on a, uh, very often. He's in a TED Talk. He is a professor. He's taught at Columbia, Delphi he's, as a TED Talk speaker, anti-capitalist, anti-fascist, anti-war. Love that part anti-violence, trauma expert, the man himself, Professor Anthony Zenkus. How are you, sir? I'm great. Thank you, Larry. It's a pleasure to be on with you for our first, our maiden voyage. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. I apologize about the lighting. Next time, if you have me on again, it will be better. But There anyway. we go. We, we will get better as we move on. And if you like what you're going to hear, I know, please do it. Click that like button right now if you would. You help me out tremendously. And please follow the good professor on Twitter, at, at Anthony Zenkus. If you can do that, that will be amazing. So, Professor, I have to ask you the question. Yes. I think everybody knows, oh, most people at least know, that poverty sucks. Not good for kids, not good for adults, terrible. But is the issue poverty or is the issue inequality? Well, they're both issues. Uh, but we can talk about what, what those things mean. And why okay. it's important to talk about the difference between the two. Okay. Because, I mean, if poverty means you don't have the essentials to survive, that's a crisis. You're in crisis. Um, people have starved to death. Uh, people are starving to death around the world. One of the number one issues facing senior citizens in the United States before the Social Security Act, 1935, 1936, was malnutrition. So it, you know, we could be a civilization of plenty, uh, and if people are still in poverty, that those material but, things are essential. Isn't that, isn't that a problem? If you're going to say essential, right, when it comes to starvation in America, and I'm speaking specifically in America, starvation is not an issue. Malnutrition is, right? Well, I said, I said malnutrition. Um, it's not really no, an issue, no. though, is it? Yeah, well, being calorie deprived. There, there's a whole bunch of folks that are calorie deprived. Food insecurity is calorie deprivation. But but I'm just, I'm just kind of delineating the difference between the two different things. Okay. And why it's important. But I, I guess why I'm giving a little bit of pushback is you mentioned poverty. And I always think of poverty as in beneath some line, right? The government says the line is right. X. If you're under that line, you're poor, but you're talking about necessities. And only from my experience, and I see around me, I live in New York City, poverty to the point of people not having enough to eat or something like that is true for people who say either are, are homeless well, or yeah. maybe have an addiction problem or something. But well, even in that case, they're not starving. They, they still have food. Some There are homeless folks that don't have enough food, and there are Americans that don't get enough food on a regular basis. It doesn't mean they have zero food, but okay. that's, where, that's where malnutrition comes in. I mean, as far as the housing issue goes, we okay we saw a 12% spike in, in homelessness nationally last year. Yes. Um, sleeping under a bridge or on a sidewalk, walk, especially in a major city, uh, anywhere from 700 to 1,000 people freeze to death. Uh, homeless every year in this country yep. and sure but you want to talk about so poverty would be definable as not having the basics to survive right then there's inequality and those are two okay. different things and there's a lot of research behind this and that is which is really interesting stuff mm -hmm. being on the bottom rung of a ladder in a in an in, a, in an economically stratified society does a lot of damage to us as humans. Okay. And 
even if that bottom rung is in abject poverty, although in this country, again, like, like I said, we've got hundreds of thousands of people sleeping on sidewalks and under bridges uh, every night in this country. So we do, that's pretty extreme. Um, when you are in a society where everybody is in that place, right? Folks tend to do a little better on the criteria I'm going to mention in a moment. Okay. Then if you were living in a society where you've got a percentage of people that are poor and a percentage of people that are very wealthy and maybe some folks in the middle. Got it. That inequality is toxic to human health okay. and human development. This is backed up with a lot of science. Well, first let me just preface this by saying we're primates. Yeah. We are apes. We're one of the, actually, the, the classification for humans is we are one of the four great apes. There's orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, and us. We are no where, less. Where, where do bonobos fall in this one? With chimpanzees. They're chimpanzees. Okay, yeah. thank you. Chimps and bonobos are almost the same animal, but they diverged based on their environments some time Got ago. It. And so chimps live in... Uh, um, Chimps evolved in a more scarce, scarcity centered environment, uh, and they tend to be more aggressive. Uh, oh, okay. And bonobo, they look cute, but actually, I've known some people in Hollywood who said, whenever there's a chimp on the set, you know, go back to your trailer. Like you do Got not it. want to be near it if you don't have to be, because they so, can. So go let me, but, but oh, let wait. me touch this piece if you mentioned about the idea of, of inequality here, right? So. Are, but I just are you... want to finish this piece up, though. Bonobos oh, ahead, are very gentle. Uh, they Bonobos, and there's not a lot of bonobos in the world. I don't know if there ever were, but there aren't mm -hmm. right now. Bonobos live in a plentiful environment where there isn't scarcity of resources. Mm -hmm. They're a lot nicer. <laughs> you know, and humans are the same sure. way. And so the point is, we are very status conscious. And if we are in a society, when you are on the bottom rung of a ladder, you know it. Right. And what research showed, and I'll just wrap this piece up quick so you can get to your, you know, come back with something here. Mm -hmm. Research strongly shows that being on that bottom rung makes us sick. It causes undue amounts of stress. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean like I'm late for an appointment stress. That, that's stress. But that resolves itself. You, you get to your appointment eventually. Yep. I'm talking about chronic stress that raises the levels of chemicals in our bodies sure that make us sick yep that, i think most people would agree that chronic stress is unhealthy for everybody and yep everybody agree affects the brain development of children so you grow up poor in a richer society these kids are having impacts on their brain development which will affect them for the rest of their lives so this whole like everyone's equal if you just work hard enough, no, you know, it, it, so, but, but I, I want to walk down this road. Then are, are you saying that it would be better for society in general? Obviously some people it would not be good for, but in general, if it was more like China during Mao, which there was more equality versus China today, which there's a lot less equality. Do you think overall, obviously there were bad things and there's bad to both. But do you think overall it was better under a Maoist society where there was more equality versus now where there's le a lot less equality? I don't like the question, but I'm going to give you an answer. But I don't, I don't like okay. the question because... Tell me why I don't like it. If you think it's unfair, tell me it's unfair. It's not unfair. But what I don't like about it is I'm not a fan of statism. Ah, okay. China. So we, we probably have a good overlap in some ways, but... China is an awful big country to be ruled okay. by one to be ruled by one government. You know, yeah. it's it's a very agree. big place. And um, look, humans evolved as hunter gatherers. So we've been we've been a species for about three hundred thousand years. Yeah. Of that period of time, about ninety eight percent of our existence has been one of a cooperative and collaborative group-centered model 
And if it wasn't for that, we never would have survived. You know, you look at Neanderthals had bigger brains. They did. Their brains, their craniums were larger. They had bigger brains. Um, We were not good hunt. uh, Like we weren't predators. You know, the only way we were. No, they were stronger than us too. Yeah. The only way we were able to survive to find food sources or to protect each other from getting eaten by an animal was through group cooperation. And I'm not suggesting everybody must be exactly identically equal. That's never going to happen. What I'm saying is when you live in a hyper competitive society, uh, first of all, it makes us sick. It's not good for anybody. So, So, so let me, let me, let me adjust my question to be fairer then. Okay. If we have to accept the fact that China was going to be ruled, if we okay. have to accept that there was going to be, a, we have to accept that it's true. There was going to be some form of D leader, whether it was going to be today's Xi or you know decades ago Mao. With that in mind, assuming that that is a requirement, right, and not your fault, but that's going to happen. It's definitely is not it, my fault, right? Exactly, but it's going to happen. And with that in mind, is it still better to be in a Maoist type of environment versus a Xi? If, if that's all I got, I, I'm going to have a leader. Is there, is Here's there a better problem way of doing with it? that? Here's my Tell problem me. with my problem with that is uh, authoritarian rule is uh-huh. also yes. really really bad for you. And so there Agreed. were and there you know <laughs> there was still poverty under Mao. Sure. So I don't. Um, but my my point being is you focused on the inequality, and I agree with you. And what I'm saying is. There's no doubt there was more equality under Mao than there is now. In China, there's much more of a, a, of a gap, in, in, there's much more of an inequality gap in China today, much more than well, it was actually, in 1950. But to, today, past five years, China has, so I, I would be more leaning toward today. Okay. Um, although the concepts of Maoism, some of them are very, I, I'm not a cancel culture kind of guy. Mm-hmm. So- Karl Marx said some things a lot that I agree with. It doesn't mean every single, I don't look at, I'm not religious in that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I take what I think matters and, and I let that resonate. Um, What's good about China today is they do, they still have state, a somewhat planned economy. It is more planned than ours. Mm -hmm. It's doing fairly well. They've made great strides in poverty reduction, especially in the past five years. But haven't they done that with capitalism? Well, entrepreneurship, I'm not anti-entrepreneurship. So here's my thing about capitalism. If I open up a donut shop and I make okay. great, great donuts. Yep. You know, listen, I, my, I grew up, my, my parents were entrepreneurs. We owned a retail auto parts store in the town I grew up in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we all, the owner and the family always end up working more, more than anybody else. Right. hundred so, percent. Entrepreneurs will often work and the employees make more money when they don't get paid. Yep. Yeah. That's how that goes. So, um, mm-hmm. if I own a donut shop and I'm working my butt off and then I get a few people to work for me and we start doing great and I pay yep. him a decent fair wage. Yep. And all of a sudden somebody goes, have you tried, Zenkis's donuts because they I've never tasted anything like them. They're they're right. amazing. And somebody with money comes by and says, You should open up another shop. I'm gonna help you right. invest. So we do that and we duplicate the same thing. Now we've got three Love shops. It. Perfect. Everything's going well. I'm paying people decently. Yep. I'm a person who I'm gonna listen to my employees. I'm gonna get their input. I want them to have I love a it. sense of buy-in to what they're doing. Love it. And then some big venture capitalist firm comes around. You talk in today's world. That's what happens. Gonna, and we're going to have a chain. Yep. And it sounds good because I would love Zankis's Donuts to be all over the East Coast where I live. Of That's course. a great idea. Next thing you know, they're, they're, they're cheating on the ingredients. They're paying people as little as they can get away with. But hold on. But here's the issue, though. They're going to write you a check. You're not going to be part of this anymore. They're no. going to buy you off. They're going to say, hey. I sold out. Yeah, here's $10 million. Will you please just go away? 
And you're going to be like, yes, thank you for the money. And you're going to go away. So now they're going to come in and do everything you said. Yes, is going to happen. In fact, they're probably going to fire most of those people, put right. in a bunch of, uh, you know, automation, all yeah, change yeah. everything. And that's half the stuff make you're right. I agree. And it sucks. And you know what it's about? It really, it gets down to the point where like, you know, what, what kind of world do we want to live in? I, I can be, I can tend to be a bit of a curmudgeon when it, or a little anachronistic, but I remember the world I grew up in. And I mean, yeah. I get that things change, but we knew the guy that owned the shoe store in my neighborhood. Yeah, but, but, but and we knew on. the people Let... that owned the furniture shop. Yeah. And I just want to throw this out. I grew up in the and South what... Bronx. I tell a story often. I knew the people who, who you know, the, the local pizza joint was owned by Joe yeah. from Italy. Yes. Yeah. And so what's happened with financialization, speculation, the hyper capitalization and commodification of our economy is you're going to get, and it's, you're already starting to see it. You're going to get what capitalists warned was going to happen under communism. Every place starts to look like every place else. It's homogenized. There's okay. no, let, let, let there's me no tell variety. you, but, but isn't no, that literally, no. isn't that literally the fed? Isn't that literally what the Federal Reserve is doing? You take the Fed out of this picture. I'm not you bad. don't you <laughs> don't have an unlimited capital source. They can't just keep buying everything. The government monopoly doesn't work anymore. And then it's very rare that some big guy comes in and buys all Zenkins, Zenkins uh, 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 donuts up. That's a that's a rarity. Usually you keep it and you give it off to your kids. You're going back to your old time. I look at that, right? What, and yeah. this is a specific example in the Bronx. Joe's Pizza, I'm not making up, that was his name, Joe from okay. Italy, he owned the pizza joint where I was on 101st Street. That's where I lived in, in right by Yankee Stadium, right? Yeah, and sure. after that, his daughter took it over. It was called Paula's Pizza. That was his daughter. She took it over. Now it's a subway. Exactly what you said. But we had capitalism back in the 70s when I was growing up. Not the and way we have it now. now. There's a difference. Correct. I agree with you, but I'm saying I don't think that's capitalism. I think that's the banking system run by the Fed. That is my or, distinction. Or the or the Fed run by the banking system. See, that's how I look I would buy it. that. Okay. Right. And so what we have is the financialization, the hyper-financialization of our society. So probably, now I know some of my libertarian friends will lament us going off the gold standard. And, you know, yes, I don't know enough course. about that. I get that whole piece. I listen to Peter Schiff every now and then. I like to hear different viewpoints. But listen, here's the piece. When we have a hyper-financialized society, yep. it's, not, it's, not, it's not about content and product. It's about speculation. Agreed. And so what happens right now is, but isn't that the, I think Thomas Piketty, and I'll admit, I, Piketty or Piketty, Capital in the 21st Century, I did not... The, the book was 800 pages long. I did not read the whole thing. But what I understand is that this is where it often ends up going. Because those who see that their ability to manipulate the, the levers of government will enhance their monopoly power and ability yep. to financialize just about everything are going to do it because they're just so damned greedy. And they don't care what it does to anybody. But Listen, aren't socialists also greedy and communists also about, greedy? Aren't they all greedy? Isn't isn't every isn't every oligarch, whether that oligarch comes from a capitalist society, a, a social society, wherever a, a monarchy, wherever they come from, a monarchy is <laughs> greedy. Of course, there's oligarchs in a monarchy. Monarchies are mostly oligarchies. Usually, yes. it's not just one family. They've got of a whole course. bunch of others that benefit from their largesse. Yes. Capitalism too. Socialism, you don't have as many. You have more billionaires per you know, capita in this country than you do in Norway. You know, it's just, it doesn't mean those places are perfect. Those are social democracies. They're not clearly fully socialist societies. I think- Norway? They're social democracies. They have entrepreneurship. They have wealthy people. But they have a very strong Norway, Sweden, Denmark. They have very strong safety nets. 
It's not yes. what we were arguing about. Uh, agreed. Like, However, like, I, I got it, but I have to. I have to talk. When you touch Norway or Singapore, well, these countries have massive sovereign wealth funds. That basically is my old saying. I would say socialism works amazingly well when you add capitalism, right? So when you add the sovereign wealth fund of a trillion or two trillion dollars, whatever they have now, and oh. Norway has what six million people, five million, whatever they have, yeah, it's, of it's course. Like a small city. So easy. I could yeah, no, easily I give it. everybody a social network if I had that. Of course. We, are we – there's a difference in this world. Mm -hmm. We're both acknowledging. It's not what we wish it was. We believe it could be different and better, and I might have different solutions. But ultimately, yep. um, the Federal Reserve is extremely powerful. Yes. Um, it's odd. Absolutely. And it's run by bankers, private bankers, sit on the board. 100. So, how is that? I mean, it's it's in essence, it's a, it's a regulatory agency in some ways. It's regulating the interest rates. Is how do you get the, you know, the fox looking after the chickens there? You know, so no we, argument for me. You know, and it's interesting because when Ron Paul was in office, the father yeah. Ron Paul. And Bernie Sanders was still pretty decent. Mm -hmm. They did sponsor a bill together to audit the Fed because the yes. Fed does not want to be audited. That, yes. that scares the I mean, people want to know why they wouldn't let Bernie anywhere near the, the White House. It wasn't because he wanted universal health care. Correct. He wanted to break yes. up the banks and investigate the banks. Something I got to tell you what people don't see when people talk to me about this, right? They don't understand. They say, Larry, why do you talk to the left so much? Because the left is actually our friend. Now, the, the establishment Democrats are not libertarian friends. They're no. not and at they're all. they're not leftists. And they're not, because they're not leftists. But far left people, actually, we do have a bit in common. We absolutely do. We yeah. do have a bit in common. Hey, absolutely. I occupied Wall Street, right? As That's did I. Well, I wonder if we saw each other down there. I would. Yes, I was there too. I'm with you. I'm That's with what, you. That's where I met Lee Camp. You know, Lee? Mm. No, I didn't know you met him. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, so he was down there a lot. Um, he used to stand up on the wall of Zuccotti Park and do his little rants. And I'm like, yep. this guy's great. He should be a comedian. Someone's like, that's <laughs> Lee Camp. He's literally a yes. stand-up comedian. Um, mm -hmm. And we became friends, and he's he's awesome. Yeah, but so th there were libertarians there. I talked yes. to them all the time. Listen, I had a friend who... One Saturday, she goes, I'm bringing a friend of mine. He works on Wall Street. He's got to come in disguise. So he comes with a baseball hat, sunglasses. He worked for, um, I think, Standard & Poor's, the rating mm -hmm. agency. Sure. Right. And he started talking. He goes, you I have no idea. What's That's walking on? distance from Zuccotti Park. Yep. Walking well, distance. Like he, he could come there. And so yep. he said, look, he goes, here we are. Standard & Poor's is raiding the banks, AAA, when we know they're garbage. Nowhere near, yep. And the financial products, when we know they're garbage, we're rating them like AAA. And he said, if we don't do it, they'll go to another ratings house. I go, correct. Extremely corrupt. Um, but, but look, Professor, I, I, I want to I wanna push on this a little bit because what I'm hearing you're saying is corruption and corporatism. But I feel like all of that could exist, whether we're socialist or communist or monarchies or capitalism. I don't understand the anti-capitalism piece. I feel this could exist in any society, whatever we were, whether we whether we had Putin in charge, whether we had Biden in charge, whether we got Xi in charge, Mao in charge, whoever was in charge. I feel like you would still get this. Corruption. I mean, corruption can happen. No, I mean a corporatist piece where you're, where whoever is in charge, the government in charge, is going to start to create monopolies. My argument in, in response is if you have a socialist or communist situation, I feel like the only way around it is violence. And I feel like so many more people will die because generally speaking, not 100%, but generally speaking, in socialist and communist environments, the ability to create a middle class – and to grow into what is that are less. I don't, know what a, I don't understand what a middle class is. I hear that word used a lot. Nobody's given me a definition. 
Yes, right now I think the middle class in, in America today, the, it used to be, generally speaking, somebody who had a good manufacturing job. I don't think that exists oh, now. What, what, but that's what, what I think it used to be. What is the today? Definition? I'm sorry. What What is middle class? How does that somebody sure. decide? I'll tell you what I think it what it used to be. I'll tell you what I think it is now and what it used to be. What it used to be is someone who could afford to own their own home with one income, and they usually generally had a good manufacturing job. I would think that's what, what middle class was, say, in the 50s, so 60s, 70s. You're defining middle class by salary range and ability to access goods and No, services. ownership. Ownership. Well, yeah, but accessing goods and services is buying your home. You don't have to sure. buy the home, but you have the I would buy that. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's how I, that is how I would define it. Yes, buy that. But Today's world, I think it's very different. Well, there's a reason, and that's because of the hyper-financialization of everything, speculation. People, yes. Just look what's going on. I mean, everything is being price gouged to death because yep. they can. And a capitalist doesn't care if somebody's kid uh, doesn't do well in school because they're calorie deprived because they can't afford enough food. They just don't give a shit. You know, I mean, well, here's a hype. No, no, here's no, no, here's no, 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 no. Now, when you say capitalist, you mean elite capitalists. If you're telling me, Listen, if, I'm average, telling you, if, if you look right now in yep. America today, mm -hmm. some of the people who are actually trying to get kids to eat are not the 1%, but the middle and upper middle class people who are giving, right. who are trying to help, who are doing the right thing. Government right. programs are failing and the top 1% don't care. Government programs work well. I mean, I'll give you an example. Uh, child tax credit lifted millions of families out of, when we when we enhanced it and gave more money it lifted millions of families out of poverty you literally give people cash they're going to spend it on rent and food and necessities um cap capitalism does not care let me get this point out though please okay please capital i am contending that capitalism doesn't care if you live or die they want to make profit you can call it elite mm -hmm. capitalism or any or corporate cap or anything you want but the bottom line is this the Boeing whistleblower didn't kill himself. He was killed, right? And people- Just got me demonetized. <laughs> oh, no. It's well, fine. This doesn't matter. I'm always demonetized. It doesn't really matter. I I'm didn't say by who. <laughs> That's true. You didn't. It's true. Yes. By the way, before you go there, let me talk to my audience. Guys, because I'm about to demonetize, please click the like button so I can get shared. <laughs> if you're watching this, click right. that like button. It does matter. If you're watching on Twitter, please retweet this right now. You want to support me directly, you can always super chat me. Roger, I see you super chat. I will grab it, I promise you. You can become a member if you want to by heading on my Larry Show YouTube page, 49 per month. Click that join button. You can wind up doing that. But no matter what, please like it. And also, please follow the good professor, Anthony Zenkis, on Twitter. Follow him on X. Make that happen. I'm sorry. Now, keep going. You're being suppressed on Twitter, too, I can tell. Of course. I get suppressed always. Because I linked to your YouTube and it's gotten one like and one repost in a half hour or, or more. And that's weird. Um, they do it also to RBN. Radical, uh, yes, I've had them on my show too. Yeah, they do that. So were you involved in the summit, the third party summit? Is that where I met you once? I can't remember. I don't think so. You mean the one that was in Arizona? No, no. It was on Zoom through RBN. I can't oh, remember. I probably was. I might have been. I might have been. I, I think you were in, on a panel discussion. But anyway. Might have been. So, yeah. So, a whistleblower for a company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, what what's the – I mean, everybody knows this is what happened. Right? Sure. And and I heard I heard somebody – I don't know. Who was it? Was it Lee? It might have been Lee Camp say, uh, you know how we know that it wasn't suicide? Because his last meal was Taco Bell. You know, obviously, <laughs> this, good. Was not, yes. this was not planned. I, I might be right. crediting the wrong person. But here's the thing. What kind of depraved mindset believes this is the solution to our problems? Let's continue to be able to make planes that put people's lives in danger and kill the guy standing in the way of everybody finding out how unsafe they are. Because we look what happened. If you look what happened to Boeing. They financialized. They used to be known yep. for making the best planes. Agreed. They yes. had the best innovation and the quality.
Yep. And then the bean counters came in and they said, well, if you can use an old part and nobody knows, why should we buy a new part? And a door, yes, a door I, I, I got it. But look, if you look at like, I'll go back to, to communists and, and I'm not saying that you're saying is incorrect. All I'm saying is I feel like you're saying that capitalists are somehow uniquely bad. And what I'm saying is Mao killed people. Stalin killed people. Yeah, we killed you, people. Gonna... They all killed people, right? Why is the capitalist the bad guy when I could name any other person who was also a bad guy? Um, it would be interesting to see. Well, I told you I'm not, I, I am not at all a proponent of state statist Marxism or, or statist, you know, uh, socialism, but let me throw this out. Okay. What would the reaction of Cuba, of Venezuela, mm -hmm. of the early USSR had been? if the United States and its tankies mm -hmm. didn't try to overthrow it. I mean, they had the October 17, uh, November 27, 20. Oh my God. The November 1917 revolution. Yep. Okay. And within, I mean, the blink of an eye, the United States of America was getting a group uh, together to overthrow that government we, we invaded we we invaded there was a war the yes. white, white versus the red russia that's, that's where people get the drink white russian from uh, absolutely delicious by the way um we did the same thing to cuba we tried to overthrow venezuela before maduro when i can't remember the name uh hugo chavez was there we do it all gosh darn it i thought i put my stuff my phone on uh do not no disturb so we tried, we do it all the time. Anyone who establishes, hey, we have a Marxist society. This is what we're doing. They, you know, in a heartbeat are going to be under siege. So it would be interesting to see. I, it's, is it Vietnam a good example? We didn't really pound Vietnam very bad after the war, right? They, no. they were communist. Um, they they're now our trading partner. Yeah. Um, they seem capitalism happy stepped in, in. Capitalism live, stepped in. I think they live longer than us too. Yeah. So I think there is an example of happening. What do you get? While Vietnam had to decide to become more capitalist, why? Because it basically is dictatorship, even though it's officially communist. It has become basically a dictatorship. So they had to give their people something, or they would have got killed. So they gave them some capitalism, which makes people happier. You know, well, I will hold on. You're looking at a snapshot in time. I, I don't know. Capitalism doesn't necessarily make people happier. Uh, people having meaningful connection in their lives, being able to have a sense of purpose. Um, hold on, that, the happiest countries no, I want, I in wanna, the world are capitalist societies, aren't yeah, they? Most of the countries in the world are capitalist. And, you know, I just want to be able to what talk about what is what is it that matters to being okay. human what does it mean to be human our essence and our nature is collective it's one it's one 100%. and you know you could see that when there's a natural disaster in 2001 mm -hmm. when 9-11 happened um everybody pulled together i mean it it, it when uh, when hurricane sandy i think it was the next year 2012 um I have friends of mine. Uh, we couldn't even get there because it was, I could, there was I no remember. gas. I was in the city. But my friends in Queens got together and they had a van and they just went out and bought diapers and um, and bought you know cases of water and and sure and then went down to the most heavily hit areas and just were going door to door handing them out. So this is our nature. It's who we are. I agree. And it, we are most happy when we are in the society where most people are getting most of their needs met much of the time. And uh, we don't do well when, and I, you know, look, I have this whole spiritual. But, but, he, but here is the issue that I want to bring with what you just said. Generally speaking, when you create a more centralized planning situation, it is almost always not as effective as a market situation in getting people what they want. 
I, I, it is very rare for you to How say. How do you feel ah. about regulation? I think a, a market regulated to ensure people are not harming people is totally fine. Oh, okay. No so you're okay with like safety measures and no lead in the toys. Like you're good with that government regulation. I, I'm good with if, no, if you're gonna put gu- if you're gonna put lead in the toy. If you're gonna sell lead, then you got to let people know. Hey, this is poison. You shouldn't buy it. No. No, I don't. Th- I don't agree there. I don't think you should be able to sell toys with lead in them. But um, I, I have I, my my problem with that is once you say that, right? This is my issue. Once you say that, you you have to be honest with with your with your with your people because once you say that, government then decides what's poison and what's not. Government yeah, decides what's bad and what's not. I will government decides this, who so. can buy what. And now you have prohibition. You have a drug war. You have black and brown people going to jail. Hold you have on. all these things because government decide what what's wrong. Lead is poison, though. Yes, agreed. Yeah. So we could agree on that. I'm yes. okay, I'm okay with this. Hold on. So is rat poison, and I can buy rat poison in a store. Okay, Larry. And it says right on it, rat poison. If, if you're don't, putting don't lead in a toy that a child, a four year old or a three year old, will stick in their mouth, that's I want. I want to live in the society where that's not allowed, and uh, and, and not let like. 50 kids die, so the market goes, well, that company sucks. Don't buy their toys. So, you know, we can disagree on that. That's literally what happened. Yeah, but it's not okay. I agree, (laughs) and we stopped it. (laughs) We 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 have an FDA right now. An FDA right now. It's corporate. That is literally killing, literally killing people every day. I know. So just because government does it doesn't make it right. I didn't say that. I just don't know if nobody. We can have third parties. We can have third parties showing people what's wrong. You see it in health food stores, in natural right. food stores, everywhere. You don't yeah. have to have government monopoly, I mean, even on regulation. Not required. We, you can't have other answers to this. You just have government making sure they're not lying. Government punishes right now, fraud. Right now, government crosses government lying. Is. Government punishes stealing. But you can have third parties. We did it with the underwriters' laboratories for I know years. You ULL labs. I know. For years, oh, we did it. And remember, and remember, I mean, it's a little separate, but the uh, League of Women Voters used to run the debates. Yes, 100%. Listen. You can do it. When you get the taste of power, mm-hmm. when these people, when Bill Gates realizes I can be one of, if not the richest person in the world, I can own uh, the largest, I can be the largest uh, private owner of farmland in the nation. And also, I get to decide uh, global vaccine policy, despite the fact that Bill Gates not only isn't a doctor or a scientist, he doesn't even have a bachelor's degree. And by the way, I don't think having a bachelor's or a master's or a PhD means you know everything. What Mm -hmm. I do know is this. I don't want somebody in charge of vaccine policy who doesn't even have a four-year degree. But what this obsession with wealth, it's gotten us to this place where Bill Gates is possible, where Elon Musk is possible, and Mark Zuckerberg, where billionaires buy social media platforms and they can suppress me and you and RBN because they don't like the message. This is the thing that I was warned communism would do and billionaireism yes. is doing it. So we probably, I know I got to, I have a hard. Um, no, you got to run, my friend. I get it. We can do this again. If you got to run, run, we can do this again. Do you, do, do you mind if I take some comments after you're gone a bit? No, feel free to say anything. I, I like talking to you. So, um, you know, we should have a longer, I'm sorry about tonight, but we could have a longer, uh, if we do it another time, you let me know. And um, I'd be happy. I'd be happy to. And better lighting. Yeah, I got to get that ring light. Going. <laughs> there we go, perfectly. All right, my no friend, light. I will. I will let you run. Yellow. Go do your thing. Um, if you want to say something, you can always come back and comment, and you can come back anytime you want. Thank you. It was a pleasure, Larry. All right, my friend. Have a good one. You too. Take care. So, guys, I hope you are enjoying what he was talking about, and and it goes back to what I talked about. We want to have conversations about these issues. Here's what I'm sure. The professor is not trying to harm. The professor is trying to help. That's what he's trying to do. I think you see me disagree on many things. I think that's true. 
But I think he's trying to help. I do believe that. And more importantly, for those of you who are more libertarian, you hardly hear people like him. There are a lot of people who think just like him, who think exactly the same way, many. And if we're going to make something work in this country, we have to chat with them also and hopefully show them that we're not trying to hurt. We're also trying to help. Let me grab a super chat. Roger, I'm late, but Professor Singh Larry want to be mayor. Let's get you to run for governor to push New York State legislature to make New York citizen ballot initiative state. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's on board. So am I. We're on board, Roger. Thank you for the $5. I appreciate the super chat. Guys, if you want to jump ahead, you can always super chat me. It's fine. Even he knows I'm getting suppressed. I get suppressed all the time. Let me grab a couple of these. Mm, all right. David says, socialism kills. I think he's heard that before <laughs> once or twice. I, I, I think he has heard that more, more than once. I think that's true. Um, Andrew says, the government and big corporations got power fever. Well, that I think was my, my, my point. I think him and I both agreed that big corporations are bad. I agree too. I just think that oligarchs will pop up in any environment, whether they're socialists, whether they're monarchists, whether they're capitalists. I don't see, and I, I think he disagrees, but I don't see capitalism being uniquely bad in this. I think governments become authoritarian and they then create monopolies. I think the only chance of survival, look, to, to be forward, I think his point about Bill Gates suppressing us or Elon Musk suppress, I get that, right? And, and there's some obvious some truth to that. But they're not going to arrest me, put me up against the wall and shoot me. They're not going to put me in jail. Only government does that. And you know, our government does it too. But the more socialist, the more communist government you get, meaning non-voluntary, right? And that's the critical aspect, authoritarian. The more chance I go up against that wall and get shot, the more chance I get arrested, the more chance that once I make the bad move, I'm finished, right? So I do think that is definitely a, a, um, an important piece. Uh, Mike Voss says, malnutrition does not equal poverty. Yeah, I don't like, to be forward, how he dodged the poverty question. I think he did dodge it, right? The reality of it is, starvation if if you're if you're deaf I, my definition of poverty is not his right his definition was you can't get what you need in america you can get what you need you just can it's just to think you can't is not true you can get what you need but you can still be poor right you can get what you need and still be poor i i don't this idea and i think a lot of people talk about this they say you don't understand is people starve in america no they're not that's not a thing Less than 10 people every year in our entire country starve to death. And most of them are on purpose. What I mean by that? They're people who they remove the feeding tubes in the hospital or some terrible parent who starves their kid to death in a basement. That's the only way that people starve to death. His point of freezing to death is true. But almost all of those people are addicts. Now, that doesn't make it okay. But it means that it's because they're addicts. And 80% of all addicts came from an FDA-approved drug. So starvation is not a thing in America. Malnutrition is, that is a thing. We do have a problem with malnutrition in, in America. And a lot of that, not all obviously, but a lot of that is actually food deserts. People simply don't have the, the means to realistically go and get good food. I think that is, or, and sometimes don't know any better, both. Sometimes don't know any better because the school system is garbage, didn't teach you about nutrition at all. And then some people just, they live in food deserts. So I think malnutrition is an, an issue, but to your point, Mike, you can be wealthy and malnourished. Right. Most wealthy people aren't, but you could be. I think that's really an interest, interesting piece. So thank you. Mike goes on to say, thank you, Larry, for bringing voices to the public. No matter what I think of some voices, it's a good thing to express the First Amendment. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So he went on to talk about chimps and bonobos. Why did he speak about that? It's a valid point. His point, which is a valid one, is that humans are naturally social. Of course they are. We want to be communal, of course. My issue is I don't want a government that is that way. I want a government that allows us to be that way, the way we want, right? That's what I want. So Mike, Mike, you got a lot of stuff. Mike also says, uh, prove how competition makes people sick. That's not exactly what he said, but again, I think he kind of dodged that question to be forward. I think he kind of dodged it. He didn't like, I think he dodged it because I don't think competition by default makes you sick. I think if you feel like you're a failure or if you feel like you're, you know, less than, I think if you believe there's no hope, 
I think you can. That's called learned helplessness. I think that can be true. But being at the bottom of any ladder doesn't by default make you sick or ill. Being by, at the bottom of a ladder and having no hope, that does, right? If I'm at the bottom of a ladder, and I have been in the past, and those of you who know me know that I have been there, and many of you listening or watching have also been there, being at the bottom of a ladder doesn't necessarily make that true. Being at the bottom of a ladder and having no hope, that does, right? That's the difference, right? I think that's what he means. It's having no hope. So yes, Roger says, social workers, not government, have shared ownership over the economy. Do they? Social workers, not government, have shared ownership over the economy. I'm not, or you mean socialist workers, not government. That's true, right? And again, look, you and I, Roger, we, we, we agree on this. We should be promoting co-ops. We should be promoting publicly owned, you know, companies and, and, and credit you. We should be promoting that more and we don't. But this is my point. Why, this is my view and I, and I say it and I believe it. What has made American capitalism so bad now? And it is bad now, right? It is, it's true, it's clear it is. It's because of what he said. It's over financialization. That's true, 100% accurate. But that's because of the Fed. You don't have to have a capitalist society with the Fed. That's not required. When you have a Fed, it prints free money. It all goes to big banks. Big banks buy everything. Done and done. Correct. You end the Fed, you have better capitalization. You have, oh, I shouldn't say better. Yes, you do. Yes, you'll probably have less of it sometimes. True. But it'll be better because it'll be capitalization that makes sense. Not just, hey, I got cash. Let me stop buying stuff. Larry, are they actually doing that? Yes. That's happening now. I got tons of money. Let's buy some stuff. Wrong reason to buy stuff if you're a big business. Why are they, why are big companies, large institutions buying housing now? Why? Because money's free, because of the Fed. So I do think his point, again, to be fair, the point is he's correct. I feel like it's not the right answer if that makes any sense. I do think he also dodged the China question, right? David says, yeah, because everyone was poor in China in 1950. And that's my point. And he might have believed it, right? And I'm not necessarily saying he's he's wrong. If if your goal is, are people happy? If that's your goal, and you don't care whether they make money or not, I could see him agreeing with that and going, hey, yes, better to be in Maoist China when everyone around you is poor and you don't know any better. He might have said that. I would disagree. I think capitalism makes you happy. I think it does. Um, but maybe he would have told me the opposite. Um, I think he kind of, he didn't like the question, I, but I thought it was a real question. It was the same country, 50 to 75 years apart, right? Same people generally, I mean, a little bit different, but same people generally and totalitarian government on both sides, right? One top guy on top in both cases, massive difference in uh, equality. I'm sorry, massive difference. Yes. In, in wealth gap. Which one is better? And I would think China's better now. I mean, again, I don't want to live under Xi. And if I have a choice of what country I'm living in, I'm living here, not there, right? But if, if my only option was 1950s China or 2020s China, I'm going with 2020s China if that's the only choices I have. And if I'm a Chinese person in China, that's the only choice I have. So I'd rather go with this one, even though there prob there, no, probably there was more equality in 1950. To your point, David, because a lot of people are poor. So we're all poor together. So, yes. Patty says, when I was a kid, 45 or 50 years ago, poor people owned homes and grew veggies in their yards. Yes. A few, a few had chickens and goats, and only one salary because mom stayed at home. How? Yes. You are right. That is what I think if you go back, you know, eat the middle class owned homes. That was a thing. If you go back, you know, that's what my mom and dad told you, right? My, my mom and dad moved out of the Bronx in the, um, in the, in the, in the early eighties, moved out of the Bronx in the early eighties. And when they moved out to buy a home on Long Island, because that was what she did. That was middle-class, right? So you did. I think we did that. We just stopped renting in the Bronx and we bought a home. 
and we had two cars, right? That was great. So that was the whole deal. So, and my mom was going to quit working, but my dad got sick and died. Um, and that changed everything. But I think, yeah, I think that's what it is. So David goes on to say, yeah, China's not doing fairly well right now. And it's sweatshop for now. True. Yes. China is struggling and they're about to have, as we are having here, we're having a commercial real estate bubble explode this year. They're going to have a residential real estate bubble explode this year. I think that's true. Gene, you are exactly correct. The only way to limit inflation is to end the Fed. I, I think the issue here is the Fed without question. If you're going to say capitalism has failed or is a problem, the center of that is the Fed. The center is the Fed, 100%. Justin says, all the problems the professor is talking about have been caused by taking us off the gold standard. He, he must have seen that because he mentioned that. And the volume on currency. Hmm. You mean the Fed, Justin? Inflation is what making everyone poor? You mean the Fed? Yes. It's what killed the world he grew up in. Um, yes, yes, and yes. Yes. Uh, John says, we don't agree on everything, but the professor is a good guy. I agree that with that completely. I, I would have him on again in five minutes. Of course I would. Yes. Whoever sends his views well, and the things we agree on, war, government abuse, are the big issues. Glad to see him on. Yes. Look, the reality of it is, he, I think he wants more of a, if I had to guess, and maybe if he comes back on, we'll ask him. I think he would want more of a localized, direct democracy world. When I had Howie Hawkins on here, he was the Socialist and Green Party presidential candidate back in 2020. Um, he was open. He said, look, I want the most direct democracy I can possibly get. He wishes every individual could vote on every single thing, right? That's his, his, his world is that world. His world is everyone's voting. No one's in charge. We're voting on everything. It's a different way of looking at things, right? And the smaller you get, the more that makes sense, right? That's it. Michael's going to say the Nordic companies, by their own definition, are capitalists. Yes. Accurate. Yes. And, and, again, massive, and I mean massive, sovereign funds, right? The, the, the Norway sovereign fund, I think, is $2 trillion. It's, it's in that area. It's, it's $1 or $2 trillion. There's only 5 million of them. There's more New Yorkers than there are Norwegians. If New York City had a $2 trillion dollar sovereign fund. Now, for those who are a sovereign fund, it's basically just a big pile of money owned by the government that they invest to make more piles of money. That's not an exaggeration. It is a massive pile of money that they invest across the entire world. The literal definition of capitalism. What he said, well, this guy's going to buy your company. That's what these sovereign funds do. So socialism works wonderful when you add capitalism. Then it's great. If I had $2 trillion for New Yorkers, I'd give everybody. Everybody gets health care. Everybody gets every. We all get checks. I got $2 trillion. And I'm making more money on it. I'm making hundreds of millions of dollars every year just in my investments for my $2 trillion. I'm sorry, hundreds of billions, hundreds of millions. That's a chump change. I'm making hundreds of billions of dollars just for my two trillion. So yeah, everybody gets, you get a new car, you get a new car, you get, of course. So yeah, and of course, yes, user uh, has been banned for naughty words, says, and America's paying for your defense. Also true. Also true, yes. So I think we agree on that completely, yes. So Patty says they, they shadow ban Lee Camp off YouTube years ago. Yeah, they... They've, they've shadow banned. Those of you who are watching my show back in 2020, I started the show in 2019. In 2020, this is uh, show number 436, I think. Um, so I've been doing a lot of shows, obviously. 434, sorry. This is, this is show number 434. So I started in 2019. I was easily getting thousands of views on each platform. One platform. I just do a Facebook show, five, six, seven thousand 7,000 views. Like that. YouTube, six, seven thousand 7,000 views. Like that. I started talking about the lockdowns. Woo. Turned down, never came back. I lost 85 to 90% of my audience overnight. Shut down, never came back. Now I stream this on eight different platforms to get the same views I got on one platform five years ago. So yes, I got shadow banned too. He saw it. He literally was like, this, you're, you're, you're suppressed. I know. I know. 
But to be forward, they didn't just suppress the right or, or the left. They suppressed everybody who was non-mainstream, right and left, 100%, right and left. So why it says, write a first refusal law where before you sell your company and make an offer, you make an offer to, to workers to purchase it. I already talked about that already, right? I, I was talking about it for a bankruptcy or going out of business um, thing. But yeah, I think it's not a bad idea. I think you do that and again, allow the workers. You, you, you do what I say is, I call it kind of like a, a, um, a right of first refusal, as you mentioned, but there's a little bit of like a, a, um, a month or two, right? Whatever it is, you know, a time period where you have that time to get your financing together, decide if the workers want to buy it or not. After that period, say two months, I'm making the number up. I'm not sure what I want the number to be. Sake of argument, 60 days. At that point, if the workers can't get their act together, produce something, you can sell off, go bankrupt, whatever. I can agree. And government can help support you because those workers are going to go on unemployment. So they can give the unemployment up front as a way of helping to secure the loan. Do that also. So all, also could work, 100%. So, all righty. Um, 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 I hope I say your name right. DeVoe Javier Moffitt. What do you mean by socialists and communists? Can you use the words loosely and vaguely? Yes. What I mean by socialists and communists is what modern day governments who say they are mean. I don't mean that as in, I know most people in today's world, and a lot of people don't know this, the meanings of socialists have changed for the average leftist in America today. If you went back 30 or 40 years, most people would have said, well, socialism is, is Cuba. That's what many people would have said. Not all, of course, but many would have said something like that. Oh, it's Cuba or it's, you know, it's China or whatever, something like that. They would have said something like that. They would have named some country and said it's that. Now, most people say socialism is workers owning the means of production, which again, I'm not against at all. My, when I say socialism and communists, I mean the government enforces this. That is my issue. Devo, help us say your name, your name right, Devo. Government enforcement. In other words, I don't have a choice, as Roger said, that if I'm selling my company, I, you know, I have a honeymoon period, whatever that time period is, right? A month or two, whatever that is, to give my workers an option to buy if they want to. No, 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 no. I remove private property and I don't get to own a business. I don't get to have it, right? So you get to keep only personal property, meaning I like have my cup that I own that is personal property. I don't get that any private property. I don't get that. That's what I mean by socialism and communism. When government enforces that, does not give me the option. If I want to do it, if I want to join as a co-op, I should be able to. I want to start a business with my workers. If I want to sell my business, my work, I should be able to easily, right? And while that's not against the law in America, there is a lot of institutional, maybe is the right answer, cultural negative aspects to it where you, it, to get financing, it's, it's really hard, very challenging to do so. So I hope that was clear and answers your question. Guys, before I keep going, I do want to keep going. Click that like button. I got some more. Uh, I want to talk uh, some comments. Click the like button. If you are watching on Twitter, please retweet this. I know I bug you all the time. Repost it. How am I going to get people to watch this thing if you don't repost it? You have to. If you like what I'm doing, you like the fact that I'm doing like seven shows this week. I am making up for my lost time. I'm trying to do a lot of good live shows. I do them all live. I take your comments. I bring on cool people. I have great conversations. If you want me to do it more, then become a member now and click join. If you're watching me every week, if you're watching me just five shows, that's a buck a show. Come on now, not bad. You're watching 10 shows, 50 cents a show. Not too shabby. Five bucks a month, click that join so we can keep this going. Every little bit counts and you get a cool little sticker there. And I see your, uh, your chats faster. So click that join button if you would, 49 per month, it helps. If not, you know, super chat me if you want to. Um, I love the fact you guys keep super chatting me. Thank you so much, but no matter what, Click that like button. I cannot tell you how important it is. And if you are watching me on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Subscribe already. What are you doing? Click that button. Give me more subscribers. I could use them. It would help. So David says, Mao didn't care that 40 plus million people starved doing a great leap forward. This is the piece that I'm saying, right? Like only capitalists don't care if people starve? Lots of bad people don't care if people starve. They don't have to be capitalists to, to hate people. There's lots of communists that hate people, authoritarians who hate people, socialists who hate people. Lots of people don't care if other people starve. And I feel almost like, and I find this a, a lot of 
people who would call themselves leftists today, many of them, not all obviously, but I, I, I got to preface that. I think you'll find many though, aren't really anti-capitalist. They're anti-American. And you find them kind of just hate America because of America's foreign policy. And I hate America's foreign policy too. But I literally have an American flag here. I'm not an American, right? But I do hate America's foreign policy. I do. It doesn't make me hate America though. It makes me hate America's foreign policy. And I think a lot of people kind of go, well, it's capitalism. Well, look at America doing this, that, this overseas. Wait a minute, about capitalism. Yes, but America does this, that, this, and overseas. Okay, if you're talking about America's foreign policy, I'm with you. But sometimes it's not capitalism. I think your point's valid, Dave. It is. Gene says, clean your customers bad for business. I, I agree with you. I don't see, I can't see capitalist countries killing their own people. I mean, I, I mean, killing other people, of course, they bomb them into oblivion. We, we, we buy our bombs and send them over and bomb people. So we kill other people. I think that's true. All day, all night. We're always bombing somebody. Do we kill our own people? <clears throat> I feel like if anything, it isn't the cap, it's the government allowing it. The government even enforcing it to make it happen. And I bring it up because one of our biggest issues is, is suicide and drug overdose, which is pumped by the, the government that has made the pharmaceutical industry a monopoly. I don't know, I, maybe I'm off on that. Anyway, the donut shop thing's wrong. He was talking about that. Donuts that shops don't want to kill people. So, yes. So, any case. So, let me keep going here. Um, let's see here. Um, Patty says, our dinner tonight was made by stuff obtained only at food pantries. Aw, four adults, all with incomes, and three kids fed completely by food pantries. You say, oh, wow. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. No, it's a valid point. This, and, and this is what I'll bring up. The system is failing. You're right. Made by government. And who's helping out? Food pantries. Run by individuals. Who's going to make things work? The system is broken. I agree. And again, many people, and, and you've heard me often say this. If you want to find out what's wrong with America, ask someone on the left or Democrat. If you want to find out what's right with America, ask them on the right or Republican. It's often true. What's right with America? Republicans like this, this is right, this is right, that's right. Conservatives, this is what's good about America, that's what, and they're usually right. What's wrong with America? This is wrong, that's right, it's wrong. The leftist is usually right. And he's right, this is a problem. Patty, you're right, this is a problem. My issue is how do you fix it? I don't think, I don't think that answer of getting rid of capitalism now is the answer, right? He told about the idea of regulation. When he brought up regulation, I don't know if that's capitalism or so, I don't know where that is, but I guess he assumed that capitalism means no regulation. I don't think that's true at all, particularly in today's world, right? What I would like as capitalism is regulation that would, that would break up monopolies. I mean, our regulation allowed Google to buy YouTube. So the biggest search engine bought the second biggest search engine. That's his regulation. Or the FDA, a monopoly, on, on things that have literally, the FDA has killed and maimed far more Americans than any crazy snake oil salesman in America. All, in fact, all of the snake oil salesmen throughout the history of America, all combined, have not created as much damage as, an FD, as FDA you know, products. So I think you can do it where the government simply says, you cannot lie, cheat, or steal. That is a crime and you should be punished. And I will go even further. If you're lying, cheating, and stealing, and it can be shown that you're actually harming people and that you knew, I think you should have to break the corporate veil. And I know libertarians don't like that, but I think you should have to break the corporate veil. Personal responsibility is a, is a libertarian you know, tenet. I think you absolutely could do so. Break the corporate veil and punish people, the, the decision makers who decided to whatever, put lead in the paint or whatever the case may be. You actually stop punishing the individual people, you stop punishing the leaders, there's no more lead in paint. Because they're going to jail. They're not paying some fine. Right now, when people do the bad things by government regulation, they know, wait a minute, this is, this is what actually happens. People may not realize this. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit, but it does happen. Five people in a boardroom. The one lawyer comes up and says, hey, I got this great plan. We're going to do this, that, this. And they go, oh, okay. Well, what's the downside? Well, it's possible some people might get hurt or die. Okay, what's the downside? 
well, if X number of people die because of how the regulations work, we'll have to pay a fine of $10 million, maybe 20 million. I'll do my best to keep it under 20. I don't think we have to pay more than $20 million. That's the most. That's the most. How much do we make? We'll make $20 million. Oh, okay, go ahead. And then they go for lunch. Didn't think twice who would die, who'd be harmed. Did not think twice. That happens literally at least once a week in America, probably every day, right? These types of things. Well, what if it was different? What if the lawyer goes to the guys, well, some people might die if we just think, okay, really, what's the, what's the damages? Well, they're probably about $20 million in fines and you might personally go to jail for 30 years. What? Yes, you might personally go to jail for 30 years. Let's not do that thing. How about we don't do that? That's what would actually happen. So I do think things would change if we were doing this. So yes. <laughs> Roger says, Finland, happiest country in the world. Can we choose to that? Yes. Let me touch this piece. Some people don't realize that. The Scandinavian countries are some of the happiest countries in the world. That's true. Many of them either have sovereign funds with pay for everything, or believe it or not, they tax the hell out of their poor and middle class. People don't realize that. You're paying a, an overall marginal tax rate in places like that. If you make hardly any money of... 70%, 80% taxes. I'm not joking. That kind of, that works in those countries. They have that tax and this tax and that tax. And the poor are paying by percentage a whole lot more. Their logic is, well, the poor use more of the services. This is their logic, not ours in America. We, we swap it. So they should pay more of the taxes. Not to be, to be forward. They actually get good services because they tax the, the hell out of the poor. So the poor say, I want my goods. So you tax the hell out of me. I want my services. And they get decent services. Most of the people in those countries, they, they're vested in it. They're paying for it, which is kind of a capitalist society. They're paying for it and getting the social services back. We don't have that in America. It's a different way of looking at it. So you're correct, but either they have a sovereign fund, right? That's option one, Singapore sovereign fund, Norway sovereign fund, or they have tax rates that are insane and paid for not on the backs of the wealthy, paid for on the backs of the middle class and the poor who use the services. A whole different way of looking at it. So you actually have a whole lot less income to spend in those areas, but you're right, you are happy. This goes back to his point of being happier, right? They are happy, they aren't spending as much money, but they are happier, I think that's true. And if that's the kind of world you want, I think it could work. And in those places where they are, Finland, by the way, Finland and Japan, the most homogenous countries in the world, and along with Korea, the top three, most homogenous. If you live in Finland, you're a Finn. <laughs> That's what you are. So, yes, absolutely true. All right, let's grab some, uh, a couple more of these. I appreciate this. Um, Gene says, how did legal women voters get ousted from organizing debates? Um, after Ross Perot made real impact, the Democrats and Republicans got together and said, That's over. We're ending it. They just got rid of them. And they made what's called the, if I remember right, the Commission of Presidential Debates, the bipartisan Democrats, Republicans together, and that's it. That's it. They just made it that way. So yes, um, they decided that, that was that they just didn't do it. They just made it, and that was the end of it right there. Done. So all right. Um, Mike says I'm hearing a ton of feelings, but not a coherent logical position. At Anthony, you jump from issue and subject without supporting your point. I think he did jump around a bit, right? He did. I was trying to to, to get some things. I think he did. I think he jumped around a bit. Um, maybe I needed more time. To, to, to kind of get some more out of him in that regard. Maybe, yes. John says, please do it again. Just getting good. I love bringing on people who uh, are leftists on the show. I do. I think we actually have a lot in common. I really do. At the end, you know, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think we do. We do want more of this. Yes, we do want more of this. A hundred percent. I do like the idea. So yes. Dave says, obesity is a thing in America. Yes, and that's my point. But you can be obese and malnutritioned, right? Those two things go together. Caloric issues are not a thing. I know he did say that, but caloric deficit in America is not a thing. It just, it isn't a thing. Malnutrition is. Caloric deficit, if you have a caloric deficit, it's because you have a substance abuse problem. I'm, and I'm not putting that away, but I'm saying that's the reason. And you're not going to a shelter to get help. That is why you would have a caloric issue. You are choosing your drug over food. I know I've had an addict in my life. Many of you listening, I'm sure I've had an addict in your life and they will very often choose their drug over food. That's true. 
So in that case, yes, there are some caloric issues, but that's not because necessarily of a capitalist or socialist society. If anything, it's a situation that most of our local communities aren't able to help people in that regard. And we made a, a war on drugs, right? Our government made a war on drugs so people can't help these people. They're all criminals now. So if anything, I would say government makes that worse. So yes. All right. Um, David says, I agree with you about hope. We are having a bit of a hope crisis in the world these days. Yes. Hopelessness sucks. I know the feeling. 100%. 100%. Yes. When If you're at the bottom of the rung, of the ladder, bottom of the ladder on that rung, but you think you can start climbing again, you're not hopeless. You don't think the world's ending. You don't have chronic stress. Remember once I told a friend of mine years ago, I said, every day I wake up, I'm at war. And she said, oh my God, that sounds horrible. I said, no, it's glorious. It's the reason why I get up in the morning. When I'm not at war, why get up? Right? I'm at war until they put me in the box. I have reason to move. I have stuff to do. I have stuff to achieve. I have hope for the future. Constantly. People tease me all the time. Ah, you're optimistic. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. I am. I'm trying to make things better. I am trying. It's not easy. But it gets me up in the morning, and I keep coming, of course. Roger clarified. Ah, thank you. Okay. Socialism is workers having shared ownership of the economy, not government. You do only gives me 50 characters, so I had to write shorthand. Ah, got it. Thank you so much for that. I do appreciate it. And I agree, most people, most, most people who would, who would call themselves leftists or socialists today would agree with that. I think that has changed since when I was a kid. When I was a kid, there was a different definition. Well, at least people said things are differently. And I'm not, again, I'm not against these. I'm not against these. Mike says he didn't like any question. You were supposed to accept and obey his feelings, apparently. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, if you were alive from 1933 to 1944, would you vote for FDR economics, uh, economics aside? Me? No. No. And this will make some of you upset. I think FDR was an absolute horrible president, one of the worst. And I know some of you are like, what? I think he was. And I'll give you one of, the, one of the biggest reasons why it's World War II. Yes, he did several things that were terrible. Jews are coming over from Germany, trying to come to America. They're literally going to be murdered in Nazi Germany. He's like, I don't want them. Send them back. We don't care. He didn't care about them. He didn't care about them. You think he cared about the Jews in, in, in Europe? He didn't. I'll ask you this question, but someone thinks I'm wrong. When did America declare war on Germany? We didn't, trick question, we never did. We declared war on Japan. Yes, we never, Hitler declared war on us. That's a fact, look it up. We did not declare war on Germany. We were like, whatever, we're gonna go get the Japanese now. Oh, Hitler declared war on us? Oh, okay, let's go get Hitler then. That's what happened. We didn't care. He wasn't some great guy who was fighting Nazism. That wasn't him. That's, that's shit he made up afterwards. And there's an argument that he might have known that Pearl Harbor was happening, didn't care. 3,000 dead people, he didn't care. So no, not a big fan, but I'll go further in World War II. He, on his own, on his own, said unconditional surrender. I'm not making this up. On his own, do your homework thing, I'm making it up. He said unconditional surrender. He just made sure the war lasted longer than it should have. After Stalingrad, 1943, the German high command knew the war was over. And if you think I'm making that up, do your own homework. It's a fact. It is a fact. The German high command knew the war was over after Stalingrad in 1943. They knew it was over. They were fighting why? Two reasons. One, because of course they, they still love their country. So many of them were still fighting for that anyway. But the second reason is unconditional surrender. Now, if you're a German and you watch what Germans did to countries they, they conquered, they erased them. What do the Germans think? If we surrender, they will erase our nation. There will be no Germany. I'll fight to the death. And they did. And they did. They knew the war was over in 43, and they fought to the death. Why? They believed there would be no Germany afterwards, because that's what they would do. So they assumed you, we would do it to them. They tried to kill Hitler over 40 times. They couldn't. Why? There wasn't enough Germans that would agree to do it. What if we had not said a conditional surrender and said, look, 
you give us these Nazis, whatever is the name of them, I don't know, whatever, 10, 20 of them, whatever. You give us these guys and we'll talk peace. We'll still keep fighting, but we will talk about peace. How are you going to repair this? What you're going to do? How you gonna, we'll talk about the end of the war. If you give us these people, we'll have a conversation. They would have killed Hitler. And they would have ended it. You might go, Larry, you got to get, why? Think about it. If we had ended the war in 44, that's a year of Jews in the death camps not dead. That's all those Russians not dead. All those Germans not dead. All those Americans. No need for D-Day. Doesn't happen. All that stuff doesn't happen because of the horrible president that FDR was. And I didn't even go into his economics. You said economics aside. I go to economics, he's worse. Confiscates gold. Starts the nanny state. He was a terrible president. Terrible. I hope I answered your question. So yes, um, I would vote for whoever was there. I don't remember who was his, who was, he was running against, but yes. So um, your mayor says, Larry Sharp for governor. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Yes. So Roger says, we can get a sovereign fund, the surplus created by a public bank. Like, I agree, right? And I actually wanted one, basically. I called it the uh, New York State Social Trust, the NIST. New York State can do it. And I was going to do it if people had paid attention to me in 2022, but nobody did. I agree with you. Yes, 100%. I, I do think we could do it. Absolutely. So well, let me grab some of these people. Um, Roger, again. FDR policies left ADOS out of New York. Yes. Oh, didn't even bring that up. Yes. He made sure. That's the beginning of redlining. Right there. FDR. That's the beginning of redlining. Making sure black people can't get all the good. You, you come back from World War II and you're white. You get a loan. And literally, by, I'm not making this up, by percentage. They didn't like Catholics or Jews. They didn't like them either. But you could be in a neighborhood. There was a percentage the federal government said. I, I did a show on this years ago, showing this. and Give me the actual documents. There was, a, there was an accurate document that showed, I think it was 30%. A neighborhood to get all the goodies from the government could be 30% Jewish and Catholic. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was, it was Irish. It was Italian. Sorry, Italian. It was Italian. It was like 30% Italian and Jewish. That was okay. No more than that. Can't have these bad people. 0% black. That's FDR. That's FDR. Terrible. Yes. Legacy Zach, thank you, my friend, for watching. FDR's folly is a great read, by the way. Thank you, my friend. Yes, absolutely. He was terrible. He was terrible. Yes. Justin goes, don't forget that Hitler and fascism was praised from the 1930s for how it rebuilt Germany. Correct. There, I don't, people don't know this. There was a pop, there was, Germany was popular in America during the 30s. And even the early 40s, there was a German-American group which was Hitler-friendly called the Bund. If you, again, if you look it up, literally, they met in New York City. There was a Nazi rally, I think it was 39, 38, something like that in New York City. 100%, yes. That's very true. Absolutely. So, um, Noam Sabah's lab, in 2022, Finland's average tax is 43%. But if you count their VAT tax, you count their other taxes, it's actually higher. It winds up being about 75, 78% in that area when you combine the other taxes they also pay. It is very high. But what's funny is the corporate tax of all of the Scandinavian countries is about the same as ours. It's about 21, 22% depending upon the country. It's about 20 some odd percent, just like ours. is. I was like, it's 21. I think America's 21. Sweden's like 22. You know, Finland's like 21 or something like that. In fact, Sweden is lowering their corporate tax rate because they need more income because, yeah, that's the reason why. Yes. So, all right. Um, I, I hope that was, was, was clear. So capitalism wasn't even a term until post-Marx. Also true. Yes. Also true. Yes. I completely agree. Yes. Um, Patty says suicide is slower with drugs and liquor. I... Yes, you're right. And sadly, Patty, sometimes we have to watch our loved ones die like that. So yeah, you, you are correct. 100% true. Yes. So uh, user um, has been banned, says Nazi rally. Mass it's correct. Thank you. It was Madison Square Garden. Thank you for that, my friend. That's where it was. Absolutely. So guys, I'm going to ask you again, please click that like button. If you like what you're seeing, if you like the stuff I'm bringing you, show me the love by clicking that like button. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, by subscribing. Click the subscribe, click the notification button. Click that little bell so you get notified whenever I go live. 
I'm doing a lot of, I'm doing like three more shows this week. I'm going to be on um, tomorrow at eight. I'm doing a, a post um, gun control debate show. Uh, Spike Cohen and David Hogg are going to be debating from tomorrow, I think 6.30 to, no, 6 to 7.30. Yeah, 6 to 7.30. Um, that'll be on YouTube. You can check that one out. We're doing a post uh, debate show here at 8 tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thursday, I have two candidates on. Uh, 3 o'clock, I have a Libertarian on. And 7 o'clock, I have a Republican on. See, so I got lefties on tonight, Republicans on on Thursday, Libertarians on and during the day. Yes, yeah, so I'll be doing that. And I'll be doing an AMA and Ask Me Anything on Friday. I'll be doing a bunch of those. Guys, please retweet this. I ask you do so. Become a member if you'd like. Super chats are always welcome. I'm going to let you guys run. I will see you all very soon.